In this after action video, we're going to unpack a key aha, key takeaway that I had personally from that interview that I did last week with Brianna, who was fresh out of basic training and AIT in the Army. And I, I just loved her perspective. I love how she was able to take uh, so much wisdom and pull it forward into her present moment. Because I know that when I was fresh out of boot camp in the Marines, I did not have the, the thought process of the level of thinking that she did. And, you know, currently right now, as I'm older, people look at me and say, you know, you're so disciplined, look at your work ethic, look at all the things you bring to the table. It must have been the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps just beat that into you, didn't it? And it's just unfortunate because it's not true. Uh, they did beat a lot of stuff into me and they did do a great job of teaching me. It just didn't stick as well as I think a lot of people think it did. You know, And I, and I have a lot of thoughts about you know my time in the military and what it would be like to be able to go back and just be present to those moments, to be in those moments again, learning from them as I was experiencing them, as they were being taught to me. Because right now I, I learned far more from the military looking back on it than I actually did in those moments. And I don't regret anything that happened, anything that took place. However, it's just something I like to point out that I, I like to learn from the past as much as I can. You know, anywhere that we can pull wisdom from somebody else or from our own past, it's only going to help us moving forward in our next stage of life. But it only helps us, uh, this learning only helps us if we do something different. If we approach a situation differently, if we move forward in a different direction, that's when that learning becomes valuable. And so when Brianna mentioned, I asked her, what advice do you have for anybody heading out to basic training, heading off to boot camp? She mentioned that she wished she had been more present in the moment. And a flurry of thoughts hit me because this is something I think a lot of people struggle with. Not just people in basic training, but just in life in general, being present to the moment that we're in. And she mentioned how it was difficult to be in basic training and, and be there, but be thinking about home. What's going on back home? How are my loved ones? How are my family? How's everybody I care about? Because I'm not with them. You know, and if you think about it, you just got stripped away. Somebody in that situation just got stripped away from everything you've loved, everything you hold, hold dear in life. And now you're placed in a situation of, of course, you're going to think about them. Of course you would. And while it's true that this occurs in basic training and boot camp, I really do think it shows up for a lot of people in their day-to-day -day life. And I really think it's a gift for anybody that, that has the ability to be mentally present to where your feet are physically standing. That's a skill set, And I don't think a lot of people have it. I don't think a lot of people have mastered it. And, and I think this is a big reason why people are constantly thinking about the next thing. What's that next item? The next thing I need to go get the next big thing that's on the horizon because we're not really present where we're actually standing. It, it makes it seem empty. It makes the present moment uh, seems far less fulfilling than it actually could be. But a big reason it seems empty is because we're not really there. At least our minds are somewhere else. We're not being present to our, our current moment in time. And you know this would be very similar if, if you were going to go watch a movie and you went, sat down, the preview started, and you passed out. Uh, before you know it, you wake up, the credits are rolling, your buddies are talking about how great the movie was, all the good things, and you just kind of like, eh, 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 it was okay, like it was, it was all right, I didn't think it was that good. I slept through the whole thing. Of course, it, of course it wasn't good to you. You slept through the entire thing. Like You don't know anything about it because you were asleep. And I think that this is how a lot of people spend our daily lives. You know, we go to work and we're thinking about everything we want to do back home. And then we get home and we're thinking about all the things that we want to do back at work thinking about those projects, things about the things that need to be done. And it's it's really counterproductive. And, it, and I think it's a really unhappy space to live because I think it the same thing shows up when we're hanging out with friends and we, we pull out phones to, to post up a picture on social media. And, and we're not actually being in the moment we're in because we're trying to tell everybody else in social media about it. And we're not actually being and enjoying in this moment. And when was the last time you actually were in this moment, in the current moment where you just sat there and assessed everything that you had going on in life. And, you know, one of my favorite analogies, a mentor might share this with me. I've, I've read it in a couple of books. It's nothing new, uh, but it basically says that if you imagine you're 85 years old and you're laying in bed, 85 years old, you got $10 million in the bank and Elon Musk's grandson strolls in and just says, Hey, you know what? We did it. We invented the time machine. And for $10 million, we'll send you back in time to this moment, to your current moment in time right now. Every single one of us, myself included, without hesitation, just instantly. $10 million gone, do it in a heartbeat. Uh, and, and then your 85-year-old self shows up, shows up right now to this moment in time that you're in. And your 85-year-old self is going to remember this and experience it very differently than we might be right now. 
uh, and especially in the story that we're telling ourselves about the situation that we're in. And, and I think we make a lot of different choices and, and these are truly this big picture, uh, your future self says that this current moment is worth a million plus dollars. And, and if you actually did it, if you actually paid $10 million to get back to this moment in time, what would you do with your time? Now, how much differently would you treat this moment? What actions would you be taking right now? You know, if you're a parent like me, would you let your kids have five more minutes before bedtime? Would you give them that one extra story that they've been begging you for? Or would you take a moment if your parents are still around to, to let them tell you that story that they've told you a hundred times that you absolutely hate back in the day because you heard it a hundred times, but your 85 year old self would kill for that one, would love to hear that story just one more time. You now, would you tell your parents how much you love them, how much you appreciate everything they've done? And how would you treat your spouse? Would you tell them that you're too busy, that you got a work project to do? Or would you approach that situation with them a little bit differently? How would you kiss them? How would you hug them just a little bit differently, a little bit tighter? In this million dollar moment, the choices that we make and the actions that we take become really clear. It really makes all the noise go away. The noise gets really, really quiet. And that's, that's really the biggest gift of all. Because while your future self would pay $10 million for this moment in time, your present self right now, you get to have this moment for free. And so show up and be present and ask yourself, how are you gonna spend this million dollar moment that you have right now?